The inner parameter will be closed now. We are at We can get ready of the start line. The men will start this race, so please, dear, may that please in this mystery day you have to be on the starting line in five minutes. big welcome to this last day out of the 2024 World Ski Orienteering Championships in Ramsau am Dachstein, Austria. We have had great competitions so far in the individual races, but now it's time for the team race and more specifically the sprint relay. The one is gonna guide you through this uh, broadcast is uh, Linus Rapp, uh, it's me, uh, I'm a former Swedish national athlete. And you see temperature 2 degrees, but you see it's a lot of sun. The weather couldn't be better on this last day of the championship. And the sunscreen is being used. And I think also we will see some of the athletes uh, putting uh, something black under their eyes to try to bring uh, the, the uh, making it easier for the eyes to read the map. The sprint relay. Uh, consists out of two athletes, a woman and a man. Uh, they are going three short legs each and each nation are allowed to start with two teams but only one of them can end up on the podium. It's a bit different uh, map today. You see the start here and uh, they will only see of course one of the courses at the time. So these are the two uh, first uh, legs for the men and you see it differs quite a lot. And also the women, but they have a. Uh, it's just uh, straight away in the east that it's quite much shorter for the ladies. And then the fifth and sixth leg for both the men and women will be uh, a straight leg. And you see the red uh, choice is the men's uh, track or course, and the purple is the. This course. The men is gonna start this race, so they will have to go one, three, and five uh, leg, and the women will go as two, four, and six, and do the sprinting in the end. And here we have the start list. The start list uh, is based on how it was the last time the World Championship was held and the sprint relay. And then the Norway was uh, the winner and actually it was exactly the same team uh, then as this time. But then it was the men who was uh, finishing the race. Sweden was second, uh, Magdalena Olsson was in that team and she is still in Sweden's first team. But Jonathan Stoll has uh, uh, been able to come into the first team. Uh, Estonia was third and they have exactly the same. Also, Mattis Yama, Daisy Kudrschneider, Finland was fourth and Switzerland was fifth. And I think those are the main five teams that will be able to compete about the, the medals today. Uh, there can also be some of those teams' uh, second teams. I would say actually I think Sweden and Finland's second team are the strongest second team. There are 21 teams that will start today and here we see the women are warming up and getting ready to take their positions. The start will uh, be made out of uh, it's six lanes and the first 30, meter, 30 meters there will be classic tra tracks so only double pulling allowed and then they will be able to skate or double pull uh, as they would like. No, of course, it's the it's the men started, as I say, and then the women will finish this race. Uh, yes, the biggest favorite, of course, Norway, with double gold medalists yesterday. 
uh, Jürgen Barkley and Anna Ulvensen and you, we also know Jürgen, he has three gold medals and he is aiming for the fourth today, bringing all the gold medals home to Norway. Then I think that they will be definitely challenged by the Swedish team, Magdalena Olsson and Jonathan Stoll. Jonathan Stoll who took the European champ uh, sprint distance last year and uh, he was also in the sprint relay last year at fourth position with the Sweden one team there. So he is definitely uh, a really hard contestant and then we know Magdalena Olsson, two gold, medal, uh, two gold medals and one silver medal. He would like to have one more gold medal. And uh, also the Estonian team has actually at the last world championships, last two times, have uh, brought home a medal. Uh, I think they will have it a bit tougher today. Uh, both Matis Yama and Daisy Kudra have not shown exactly the same speed as earlier. Here we have him, the king of Ramsau, Jürgen Baklid, uh, taking the first uh, leg for Norway 1 and having Anna Ulvensson at the second. Jonathan Stoll, he has uh, been at an exhaust pipe and taking some black, putting it under his eyes. He will uh, go the first, third and fifth leg and before Magdalena Olsson. Mattis Yama, uh, he is, uh, uh, I would say, a specialist of the sprint relay and he will go with Daisy Kuderschneider. Here we have Niklas Ekström. Niklas Ekström going with Maria Hoskari, who was fifth in the ladies' race yesterday. Nicole Müller in the Switzerland one. I think actually the Swiss team can be really tough. Uh, we have seen Nicola Müller's shape and then Elian Deininger as the woman going. Bulgaria, Stanimir Belomashev and Antonia Grigorova. Stanimir who was second at the sprint distance here in Ramsau. But I think that uh, probably Antonia will be a little bit too slow. But it can suit her because it's uh, as you saw on the map, when we saw it quite uh, fast, they, it's quite much wide tracks and uh, it can suit Antonia. But I still think that uh, the best athletes in the top 5 uh, nations will be a bit faster than... So you see, they have already uh, got their maps and uh, 15 seconds before the start they will be able to put their maps in the map holder for the first time. So they are just standing here, feeling a bit nervous, shaking their legs and just waiting these last uh, two minutes to the start. And we will be able to follow this with the GPS tracking as we have seen in the earlier broadcast, but also uh, TV control we will have in the about in the middle of the race. Each leg will take about six to eight minutes and be around two kilometers for the men and 1.7 kilometers for the women. So it's it's a very fast and that is what opens up, I would say, for example, Estonia. Matis Yama, who has lost a bit of his pace uh, in the end of his career, but six minutes he can go really hard. And then it's quite hard for, example, Jürgen Bakli or Jonathan Stoll to make some seconds. And then we know Daisy Kudr Schneider uh, goes on the second leg for Mattis and Estonia. So that is uh, the tricky part. I think there will be made some shortcuts today also. Uh, because it's out on the meadows, there will be quite a lot of shortcuts made there. Uh, and often you talk about you wanting the, the long forking uh, in the beginning. I was thinking sometimes it's not better uh, because you can get stuck behind uh, some slower athlete. But in, in this day, with the conditions, with a lot of wide tracks, and I think it's it's good for the teams to have a long forking in the beginning because then you can see the other runners ahead of you and uh, even though you can pause on the wide tracks. We also saw Apo Vipola going in the Finnish second team, uh, actually with uh, junior world champion Amanda Ulifutka uh, going there for uh, as the lady in Finland too. Very interesting. And now we just have about 15 seconds, so soon they will be able to put their maps in the map holder. Here we see, putting them in. It's important to get it right. And on the other legs they will uh, change over with a hand clap between 
the uh, athletes and then go to the map board and take a map. So there, Jürgen Bartlett almost not able to stand still, looking like the Norwegians have had had some good skis. So they're going away, and I think uh, uh, depending on which uh, forking you have, you should go left or right in the beginning. And we will see how it uh, differs between the athletes. Actually, it's quite uh, uh, strange or strange, unusual uh, for this sprint relay. That is quite a lot of houses, so it's quite a lot of black on the map, and I think it's extra important for the athletes to read on uh, a read a bit extra because that would quite be a tricky. It looks like we have Tobias Halvenik taking the start. Jonathan Stoll, Jürgen Barklid. Niklas Ekström, we see Nikola Müller passing Stanimir Belomarshev, it's high speed from the start. So we get to follow here the athletes going away. And they take the right there and will go up towards the control and perhaps... And we will see, I was seeing a lot of the top teams. Here we see some of the racers, but you see Stanimir, he doesn't have that control. He are coming to his control and it looks like perhaps someone has taken the other route choice and was ahead of him. I'm not really certain. We will have to see what is happening out there. And they go out down here, uh, passing the ski jumping hill and going. And you see it's right in the middle of the houses, and then they go out on these meadows. So now we'll see. They will differ in the forking. So it's important to read to the right control. Looks like, I think it's. Uh, here we have Alvin Gesselius at the second Swedish team making a little shortcut. You see, already making shortcuts and not, not even taking the uh, other runners shortcuts. So, here we have the first runners going into the different controls. You see Niklas Ekstrom taking another route choice to finish the runner. And it looks like actually he just did some small mistake. Ah, it was Apo Vipula and had a really good start. Piaz Havnik, Apo Vipula, Jorgen Bakli, Nikola Müller, Matis Jama, uh, Jabel Marshev. We have the two Swedish teams that was at the third control. So they have had, I think, the shortest uh, working was to the uh, A option there. And we will see, it differs quite a lot uh, on the next working, so it shouldn't be any difficulties for the runners finding which uh, group, which pack to follow, or if you're first you have to read, of course. They will see other races all the way here, so they can definitely use each other. And it looks like Switzerland too has had a quite bad start there. So, Tobias uh, Harbenich, the home team, Austria in the lead, and he has Antonia Erhardt on the second uh, uh, course, or second leg, and I think uh, she will be a bit slower. It looks like Nikola Müller is here ahead out of, uh, yeah, before Alvin Gesselius, they are having the C option, I think it's a bit faster. And actually it looks like Estonia, Matis Yama having some difficulties uh, with the D option there and also Stanimir Belmarsha, maybe they get stuck together. It looks like at the C option uh, we have Nikola Miller getting some seconds there and then coming from the D option Jürgen Bartlett and someone's falling there also. Who can it be? It's Peter Horvat. So you see, it's uh, also you, you do a lot of shortcuts but it's not uh, uh, ice rock hard out there. So it's easy to fall. It looked like uh, Matis Yama and uh, Stanimir Belmarshev did something at the same. And here I, we are having the first runners. Uh, I think it's not Nikola Miller. We will see they will go to this different fork in here. And uh, we saw Nikola Miller was making a... Okay, that was Nikola Miller making a big shortcut. And uh, that is also some something that's a bit uh, slower when you have the short forking in the beginning. Nikola has to make that uh, shortcut. And it looks like, I think, Sweden is making a worse shortcut there. Uh, with the Albin Gesselius just ahead of uh, Nikola's Ekström. So that's Sweden 2 and Finland 1 coming to the control. And they are behind Nikola Miller at the moment. Going, actually, 
out to the wide track to this control. I was thinking they should go left on the narrow track, taking some height, and I think that uh, they will lose time on this. They will see Tobias Havanif coming from the other direction and just ahead of them. And they, the control will be quite close into uh, the uh, ski jumping. They will turn left here and go into the control. So they will have the F option, these athletes, and uh, the E options will probably come from the from the left soon, Nikola Müller. So Tobias Havnik still in the lead ahead of Niklas Ekström. I think we see uh, we see Nikola Müller there coming. And to this control, it's uh, quite interesting if they will take uh, some height or if they want to go around. Uh, no, that's uh, on the last loop. I think you have to go here and under the bridge coming to the control. Yeah, you see the bridge in front there? So they're going here and the green uh, uh, crisscrossed on the map, that's skiable. So it's uh, it's not a ski track, it's skiable all this time. And the, the purple the crisscrossed on the uh, track, it's not allowed to go. So you see here, they go under this, but they will not be uh, allowed to go left here. So they have to go around the lake. And I think, yeah, you see, uh, they are wondering what to do. They have not read the map. This is quite a big mistake from the Finnish, uh, Finnish first and second team. And uh, the Swedish second team, I also think Austria was there. So that uh, probably, I see that uh, Jonathan Stoll is doing the other route choice there. Uh, so we will see. But uh, Alvin Iselius and Apo Vipola, they hadn't re read the map uh, correctly there. So Tobias Havnik still in the lead here. Coming in to, to the changeover, the first changeover after this first leg. And they have been out in soon seven minutes. Uh, actually, we have Nikola Müller and Jürgen Wacklid here in the front. Uh, so they had the other forking option and were a bit faster. Anna Ulmesson, Elian Deininger and Antonia Erhardt is uh, putting themselves in position to go out and do their first uh, course. So they had 657, Nikola Müller, really good start for the Swiss and Norwegian, the biggest favorites. Then we wait for Austria. I think that uh, they may have a good best start. And here we have Finland 1, Finland 2, Sweden 2, Sweden 1. Uh, they are about 15 to 20 seconds behind. Sending out the Swedish strong ladies, 18 and 19 seconds behind. And uh, earlier you were allowed to uh, wax the skis between the, the courses, but uh, that is no longer because of the door ban. So they will have to go on the same skis if something doesn't happen to the ski, they are allowed to change it. But earlier when we were watching sprint relays, we saw the waxing men running and taking the skis directly. That is not uh, today, they will have to go with the same skis without waxing. Here we have the 9th and 10th team. Cheka second, uh, Lithuania and actually Cheka one has had quite... And here we have him, Matis Yama, Estonia, they are already out of this uh, fight, I would say. I, I was thinking it will be probably be harder for them. They have uh, two straight world championship medals, but today, even though he have had the longer forking, one minute, it's too long. They won't be able to catch that up. And, uh, and we have also seen Daisy Kuder Schneider not having the pace, having the shape uh, as she has had earlier. So uh, I think that uh, he will uh, fight hard, but probably not really have the pace. Here we have Anna Ulvensson just ahead of Elian Deininger, and they had both the same here, option uh, D. So we see everyone is going that direction, and here we see. Um, difficulties from the world champion uh, Anna Ulvensson making quite a shortcut down there. I think she loses time. You see, she's gliding on her butt there and losing crucial seconds. Elian Deininger getting up in the top position there. So, actually, um, I think Anna Ulvensson that's a quite a big mistake. And on these sprint relays, when it's so short and it's so tight, those seconds are really important. And you see, uh, maybe not 10 seconds, but she were some seconds ahead of Elian earlier. And she doesn't have the same pace out here, she has to work a bit harder. So they are going to, we will see which option. I think that is the B option. And look, mistake from Elian Dininger, going too fast to the control and swiping her arm and missing 
the checkpoint because you have to be close enough and not going too fast. And that is uh, something you have to keep in mind uh, going so fast on this sprint relay. So both mistakes from Swiss and Norway and Sweden 1, Sweden 2 having the A option as I said on the first loop I think it's a bit uh, faster and we know that there has been mistakes from these two top teams Norway and Swiss so we will see how far behind the Swedish athletes are we have Anna here and uh, Elian and then Lina Lindqvist, Magdalena Olsson just 5 and 6 seconds coming here and uh, I think uh, it's stressful for the Swiss and the Norwegian and it looks like the top, uh, the top uh, four teams are getting settled here. Uh, Maria Hoskari still 20 seconds behind. Uh, yes, there is junior world champion, world champion. Lifutka at sixth position. The clock is ticking. Antonia Erhard has lost quite a lot of time. 31 seconds behind there. And I think Antonia Grigorova 36 seconds behind. Uh, so we will see. We are waiting for Daisy Kuder Schneider to see if he can do an amazing race. But he went out a minute behind. So I think, as I said, sadly, 110 uh, after she went out. and. It will be really tough for them now. She comes there. She's there. 57. She just picked up 13 seconds. About the same as the Swedish teams. And we see here, uh, Norway have had the C4 option. And uh, Swiss, Switzerland, Sweden 1 and Sweden 2 has had the D option. Just as Finland. It looks like uh, Norway is having the, the longer option out of these two. Uh, so, we will see. She tries to catch up these seconds now, Anna. And uh, it, it's quite tricky, Elian going in a shortcut. Magdalena Olsson looking like uh, she's a bit uh, stressed, I would say. I think she wants to go faster and she tries to pass Elian here. Elian going in, straight in on the horse and they will go. I think that uh, the route choice that Nina Linkvist, Sweden 2, is taking. Oh no, she's not going. Yeah, she has the F option. Of course, so no one of those runners seem to have the E option. Uh, it looks, and I think if they had the E option, they have taken the wrong route choice. Anna Ullensen has catched up on Elian Deininger and Magdalena Olsson. Looking good for the Norwegian team. So we know all Sweden 1, Magdalena Olsson is doing something really bad and this will be quite heavy to get right perhaps magdalena has the e option and i think that uh, may lose her a lot of seconds also linda linquist trying to make the shortcuts it looks like the swedish teams are having quite big difficulties at the moment yeah you see sweden 2 has the e option and I think they are losing a lot of time here. But uh, Norway and Switzerland having the shorter forking here. So it's not uh, strange that they are getting some seconds. We saw that uh, the Finnish athlete was around 19 seconds behind. And also Lina Link is looking like she's doing a mistake. Not taking the uh, straight uh, over the ski jumping hill there. So I think the Swedish teams are not going as planned. The Swiss team, the Norwegian team, are looking like they will be fighting. And you see also Magdalena Olsson and Maria Hoskari going around there and not making the shortcut inside the ski jumping hill. And actually, I don't understand why. But you see, uh, she was Maria Hoskari was 20 seconds behind and 15 seconds behind Sweden 1 and Sweden 2. And she has catched up on Sweden 1. So... Now we will see how they do to the seventh control. If they do, do you see, they split up. The Swiss is going to the right, and Anna Olsson is going under the bridge, and then doing a little loop coming up. We will see which route choice is the fastest there. Looks, I think, it looked like the going under the bridge was quite fast on the first loop. But you see, they will go into the seventh control, and then they will go to the last control and. Change over, and here we have Nicola Müller, Jürgen Botti, standing ready to go out again. And we see Anna Ulvensson has some meters down to Elian Deininger. So, the Norwegian team, who are reigning world champions and both won the world champion gold medal in the middle distance yesterday. And it looks like I think Anna Ulvensson is a bit stronger than Elian Deininger. Elian already showing 
that uh, Anna is a bit stronger and they have two legs left. So it's not so good for Switzerland if Elian uh, already are showing to lack the speed towards the Norwegian. And I think it was Linda Lindqvist in Sweden too coming afterwards. And uh, then I think uh, Magdalena also on Sweden 1 will be coming. So she has, uh, as it looks on the GPS, gained some seconds towards Maria Hosmeri in the Finnish team. But they have lost seconds on that route choice. And I think they just will hope that uh, the Norwegian or the Swiss team can make some mistakes to gain seconds. You see uh, Linda Lindqvist there, she was all in the leading group and now she's 19 seconds behind Magdalena Olsson. 27 seconds behind. This is not the first leg that the Swedish ladies wanted. The Swedish ladies who took 8 out of 9 medals in the individual races but now showing their uh, fragile. Here, Maria Hoskari is coming, changing to Niklas Ekström at 5th position. And then we have Finland 2 at 6th position. So they are only 3 seconds between them. And this is what I talked about earlier. In some part or in the end of the relay, we don't want need to know that exactly now but you see for example Sweden 1 and Sweden 2 is at the moment fighting for the bronze medal uh, against each other so in, in the beginning of, of the sprint relay you're fighting against the other team but in the end these athletes really know that I also I can come in like Sweden 2 can come in on the third position but if Sweden 1 are ahead of them they won't get a medal so in the end it's really important to also know where your national teammates are and we see Switzerland 2 is at the ninth position one and a half minute behind and we had Bulgaria at 7th and Italy at 8th position so the Corradini uh, siblings have started well and here we see uh, the Czech team but first it's the Austrian team and we know Antoni Erhard has lost a lot of time Tobias uh, Aben is going out on the 10th position and Czech 1 has actually catched up some time uh, or positions and Estonia still not there. So we see here they do different route choices. Jürgen Buckley and Nicola Miller. Nicola Miller losing some time on doing the same route choice as uh, Anamir Belomarsha was doing, going to the left and then taking the hill and turning around at the controls. So now at number 34 we have Jürgen Buckley in the lead looking like uh, the whole week, I would say, Jorgen Bartlett in the lead. And he is five seconds ahead of Nicola Miller. And we know they will have different forkings here. And on the first loop, it looked like the forking that uh, Jorgen had was a bit longer. Still waiting for the Swedish teams. Uh, it looks like Alvin Gesellius has lost some seconds. Yeah, and Jonathan Stoll also have lost some seconds. But this looks like Jonathan Stoll, I think. No, it was Alvin Gesellius. 29 seconds behind. And Jonathan Stoll coming here. Both the Swedish runners are losing time. And uh, I think the gold and silver medal are looking like they are sailing away from these teams. Apovipla Finland 2 uh, at 5th position. He has passed Niklas Ekström in the beginning here on the their second leg, but the third leg in the contest. Niklas Ekström actually 15 seconds behind uh, Apovipla there. He had the B uh, forking there, but uh, I think still losing more time than expected. And yeah, here we see the forking, and you can see clearly Norway had five seconds to Switzerland, but the D options are a bit longer, and the GPS trail is 10 seconds. So now it looks like it's almost 20 seconds down to Switzerland. Sweden 2, Sweden 1 going together. Here we get to follow Nicola Müller, the Swiss, at second position at the moment. I'm not certain if he has the E or the F option. Uh, we will wait and see when he goes out here on this meadow. Uh, and I, as we have seen, actually, I think uh, they are going a bit more on these tracks now. It's not super fast to making the shortcuts. We saw, uh, for example, Magdalene Olsson, the, the world champion queen, I would say, here in Ramsau, doing quite a big mistake trying to shift a narrow track, making a shortcut and losing many seconds up to Linda Lindqvist. So we see uh, 
it looks like Jorgen has the F option and I'm not certain for Nicola he can still have the uh, F option and go yeah he goes straight out to the wide track there and Sweden 1 Sweden 2 uh, definitely having the E option has been passed by Finland to Apo Vipola here we see but Apo has the same control losing some no. I, okay, he had taken his control and are going out to the white track just as Jürgen Buckley. So we will see if the, the Swedish runners go this narrow track down in the south, uh, taking some height. Here we have Nikola Miller pushing hard on his second leg and going in to the left quite soon for taking his control. And Jürgen Buckley, I think we see Jürgen Buckley just ahead there. And it looks very good for the Norwegian top favorites this uh, for in the competition. Nikola takes the control there and now you have to check so you don't uh, get you see together you can they are coming from the up there in really high speed uh, but uh, Nikola Miller has control over that pushing as much as possible here and we know that they come when they come to the finish these guys have the same forking to the on the last loop so it's it's a chair it's the same course he goes out to the right and going around this uh, forbidden area not going under the bridge and coming towards the control it looks like Finland 2 definitely has some seconds on Sweden 1 Sweden 2 Jonathan Stoll has passed Alvin Gesselius uh, and you see he is right behind Finland 2 there so it is two teams that are clearly ahead of the others uh, but we will see it looked I won't say Elian looked slow <laughs> Maybe it's just that Anna was really strong, but it looks like she showed, showed some weakness and not being able to keep us back here in the flat area towards the first changeover oh, Now it's time for the ladies the second leg for those and uh, As I said earlier, it's three legs each so The ladies have two legs left and Jorgen who's coming here. He only have one leg left and it looks really good for the Norwegian team. Jorgen is composure stable as looks like he hasn't done any mistake out there. Nikola Miller losing some seconds on the longer forking and probably losing some seconds on the speed also. 15 seconds behind changing as number two here out to Elian Dininger and the Swedish teams are still waiting and it's yeah it looks like Jonathan Stoll is ahead of Apo Vipola the Finnish second team but it's getting closer to 45 seconds here it's quite far up to the top two positions but a hard bronze fight as it looks at the moment we will see what happens with the top two teams so we see um, Jonathan Stoll Sweden 1 just ahead of Apo Vipola Finland 2 and Sweden 2 with Alvin Gesselius right behind there 50 seconds after Norway and then they are 35 seconds after Switzerland so I think and we know that the, uh, we know that the, actually the Swedish ladies have had the longer forking at the uh, E option so maybe they can gain some seconds there and Niklas Ekström losing quite a lot of time here and I think that it's Finland too who will compete with Sweden about the bronze. Uh, so you will see actually losing a lot more time than I was expecting. Niklas Ekström going out together with Apo Vipola and coming in here almost 50 seconds behind. This has not been a good leg for Niklas Ekström. Uh, the youngster who have taken two medals this week but today it might look like his powers has ended. Uh, we see Antonia Gregorova putting herself in this changeover line and then now we get to follow Anna Ulvensson in the lead the Norwegian now she doesn't make any shortcuts she knows that was a mistake uh, and she's going straight out to the meadow meeting some of the other teams and I think she has the A option here and that is the shorter option so she has the shorter option in the beginning of this uh, second leg for the ladies uh, and then we know on the two last legs I said it's the same course so when they change over uh, after this leg they ha will have gone exactly the same length and exactly the same controls and Anna Ulmesson looking like he's uh, gaining her lead 
just uh, pushing down to Switzerland on the second position because we, I think we saw Elian dining it just around there, but it uh, looks like he has lost time. We'll see. Anolus taking the uh, third control here, and he has stopped. And now I think, and I think it was a bit longer actually. So she has the longer hair. Elian have had the same option, the A option. Uh, reading the map carefully, I think she has lost time. Yeah, she was 15 seconds behind in the changeover, and now it's uh, closer to 30 seconds. So Switzerland is losing time. Norwegian, uh, the Norwegian Anolvesson, was 31 seconds is behind now, and we know uh, 50 or 48 seconds behind uh, the Swedish first team went out, and then it was Finnish second team and Swedish second team, and it looks like. Magdalena Olsson has picked up the pace. She has actually caught some seconds, but it's still a long way to Norway. But not so far up to the Swiss team now. 15 seconds up to Elian Deininger. Linda Lindqvist fighting to keep catching the uh, Swedish back on Magdalena Olsson. 58 seconds behind, 12 seconds behind Magdalena. And then we have Amanda Ullifutka, 105 behind the leading Norwegian. And then we were waiting for, I think, Finland won, but uh, I think, as I said, they are getting a bit too far behind. Yes, Sweden and Switzerland having the same option here, and Norway has already taken the fifth control. So, they are clearly in the lead, but Magdalena out chasing uh, Elian now, and it looks like it's not 15 seconds anymore, I think it's closer. They are taking a small difference. Uh, route choices and here we have uh, Anulmesan going up this narrow track to the left taking her control doing much better work than the Swedish teams did to this control I think it's quite steep but it's a short leg she goes with full power working hard to get to this control and it looks very good for the Norwegians she's almost up at the white track and is about to start going down to the control we know she has almost 40 seconds down to the chasers so even though this 40 is a bit longer uh, they will still have quite a big lead when uh, they will send out Jorgen Baklid on his last leg the fifth leg of this sprint relay and uh, actually she also goes around uh, I am not certain why because at the map it looks like they are able to do a shortcut there but uh, I would say they are the best in the world so Probably they are doing the right route choice there. And Anna knows exactly here, it's the same 7th control as first uh, loop, so she should just do the same thing as she done the last loop. Looking at the, the followers, uh, Elian Deininger had the same uh, forking as uh, Anna Ulvensson, but the Swedish ladies can't possibly pass them, or actually just Magdalena Olsson looking at the GPS like she has catched up. You see here, Elian coming towards the E control. Uh, Magdalena should have the F forking this time. And she is clearly ahead, but she has to go into the F control. And you see Elian coming with a lot of speed down the hill. So I think when they are going out to the seventh control, they will be around the same. And you see, actually, Elian Deininger doing this uh, shortcut to the seventh control. And I think she gained time, even though it's quite hard to be able to turn around there I think she gained time doing that route choice because it's a long way going around that fence like the other runners have done and she is still ahead of the Swedish teams uh, it looks like maybe five seconds down to Magdalena Olsson I think Magdalena Olsson will go as hard as possible to catch up on that back but uh, Anna Olsson uh, having no mistakes to this seventh control and uh, looks like the winner she was yesterday and it looks really good for the Norwegian team. Actually, Magdalena Olsson not possible to uh, uh, change, chase uh, up to Elian's back there directly when going out on the wide track. We will see when they come into this last control. Here we have the leaders, Anna Olvensson and Norway won at the fourth changeover. Now Jorgen Baklid is ready to go out on his last leg and just leave all his powers out on those meadows. And it's uh, quite a big different route choices or uh, a different course 
on this fifth and sixth. So they will be going to the ski jumping hill and then uh, turning around quite early and going more to the west of the map. So it's uh, a big difference on this uh, leg. And here we have Elian Dininger followed by our uh, cam skier. And Magdalena Olsson still hasn't chased uh, up to her back. So Elian looking stronger this uh, leg and probably I would say that it's Anna Ulvensen who is the strongest of these women out there. Elian just there and you see Magdalena Olsson maybe three or four seconds behind. Uh, they went out, Elian went out 15 seconds behind so she has lost quite a lot of time on Anna Ulvensen and Magdalena went out went out 48 seconds behind so even though i think they had the shorter forking they are still losing time on this leg and jonathan almost scoring too hard two seconds behind switzerland this is the silver fight we are still waiting for linda lindquist uh, picking the lost control there and is gonna send out albin Gazelius in the fight for the top three positions but the seconds are ticking away i think it will be hard for Albin to pick up 30 seconds on Sweden 1. And then we also know that Linda had the same forkings at, as Magdalena. And she lost quite a lot of time on this leg. So uh, I think that it's the Sweden 1 who will be fighting for the medals. Here we have Amanda Ulyfutka. That's Finland 2 at 5th position at the moment. And she also looks like she has been bringing it all out there losing quite a lot of time in the end a bit stiff in her legs Abo Vipola he has had quite a bad championship he has looked disappointed in a lot of the races yesterday he had some difficulties with his ski binding uh, I think he wants to show that he is better than he has been these races we see Sweden and Switzerland doing different route choices to the first control. Jörgen Backlid has already taken his second and are going down to the ski jumping hill. Very interesting to see Nicola Miller going the left uh, and then trying to back up to the control. And uh, Jonathan Stoll actually doing the right, just as Jörgen Backlid. And I think that the right is better. Jörgen Backlid come here to the ski jumping hill. It's lucky no one is jumping today. Taking the control and uh, going out to the, to, to the other direction. So we will see how they will come here. But more interesting for the competition because it looks like Norway is just gliding away and the, the other runners don't stand a chance to beat this, uh, this team. Uh, I think it's more interesting to see the silver fight between Switzerland and Sweden at the moment. Jorgen has taken his controls. There we see. I think that was... Oh, I'm not certain. At least one of the runners. We will see if we see the colors there. That was Jonathan Stoll. So then probably Nicola Miller gained some seconds. There we see. 46 seconds behind. He has catched up on sometimes. His route choice was the best. Uh, Jonathan Stoll has lost some seconds. He is now 8 seconds behind Nicola Miller. And I think the Swiss team will be needing that. Because when Magdalene Olsson starts chasing on the last leg... Uh, I think Elian most likely will have so many seconds as possible. So, good start for Nicola Miller doing his own route choice and taking the faster one. And see, we see here Jorgen Bucket coming under the bridge and now towards a different control. So, he keeps on going straight, doing some small shortcuts here and rounding this small leg. Yep, we get to see here. So, he takes this uh, right route choice. I was also looking, it's possible of doing the left route choice. It's a lot of climb in the beginning, but uh, uh, then it's a bit easier into the control. But it looks like Nikolai is doing the exactly same as Jorgen and also Jonathan Stoll. Uh, I think it looks like maybe the seconds are stretching between the Swiss and the Swede. But I think that's a mistake from Nikola Müller going here. He's... he's uh, uh, he's changing his uh, route choice here in the middle and going there. Actually, Jonathan Stoll is doing the same. So there will be no difference between the Swiss and the Swede. So they are doing quite a different route choice uh, compared to Jorgen Buckley. Jorgen Buckley is going quite up, and, uh, up high and taking the control from the north side. Ah, 
then Yonatan changes again and that is a time loss for Yonatan because that's a longer way to go than the going under the bridge and we will see how this will be at the control I think at least that's some seconds losing for Sweden 1 Alvin Gisellius, Sweden 2 taking the other route choice but uh, not taking the all the way to the left going some kind of left middle uh, option we see how Nikola Miller is coming towards the control I think it looks good for the Swift athlete uh, Jürgen Backlid has taken the control going towards the sixth control and Anna Ullensen is already standing here yeah he is ready to go out and bring home the gold medal today also so we are waiting for Jürgen Backlid uh, coming in quite soon towards the finish reading the map carefully here doing a big shortcut he, he should go inside this uh, playing area I would say uh, and take the control it's around there it's, uh, yes he takes the control and then he reads and he goes back yeah I think that's the best route choice turning around at that control and going down and then coming into the last control before changeover uh, interesting to see how the Swedish teams uh, comparing to the Swiss team is going and I think that uh, we will quite soon be able to see which of those teams gained the most seconds we know Jonathan was just behind eight seconds and it looks like he's pointing to some of the athletes it's coming there I think there are two runners and I think there is probably less than eight seconds between them and uh, Jorge Baklid is here first uh, he is done with his skiing this week and it looks very much like he will take hope the four gold medals the perfect championship for Jürgen Baklid we shouldn't say too much Anna Ulvensen should go out here on her last leg Nicola Miller taking this uh, seventh control and he is still ahead of Jonathan Stoll uh, meeting each other there and perhaps around eight ten seconds still so Switzerland in the top position for the silver medal Jonathan chasing hard but both these athletes know now they just have to bring every second possible to their ladies that goes out on the last leg and we see here Nikola comes into the last control actually they have gained some time on Jürgen on this course and no the, it's the exchange time it's definitely less than eight seconds between Jonathan and Nikola Jonathan closely listening to his uh, SI card beeping so 54 seconds up to Norway for Switzerland and 57 for Sweden it's three seconds between the uh, Swiss, Swiss and Swedish team here in the silver fight and we are still waiting for any more team but I think that uh, they have lost a lot of time uh, we will see Sweden too looks on the GPS tracking like he is doing a mistake and we know he was already a bit behind so the clock is ticking and we see Anna Olsson and we see the Swiss and Swedish team going out almost together neck and neck for the silver place at the moment here we have it's almost the same course so it will be interesting to see uh, they don't have the same uh, first control so it's quite much easier I think for the ladies just go like Anna Olsson is going there and uh, it looks like Magdalena Olsson is changing her route choice and that is not uh, I'm not certain which route choice is the best she tries to uh, lose elevation but if you were looking he was going out uh, on Ellis back and having the wrong direction from the start so, so they're losing some seconds but we will see which route choice is the best over two minutes behind we have Sweden 2 changing over there and uh, Almig is here so looking a bit mad uh, punching his pole out in the air uh, luckily no one got in the way of that and we see here Sweden 1 Sweden 1 is clearly uh, looking like they are taking the better route choice but Elian Dainier soon going downhill coming with a lot of speed I think we see Magdalena Olsson she has passed Elian Dainier but it's not so much seconds because that is not Magdalena Olsson Magdalena Olsson is coming in and taking yes so it looks like Sweden 1 is in the possession for the silver medal at the moment around 5 seconds before Switzerland Elian coming here with a lot of speed towards this second control Magdalena 54 seconds behind and Elian 1 minute behind but 
a Magdalena not certain where to go she lost some seconds there and she needs to go out the same way or at least she doesn't want to get stopped by the fence Magdalena doing a mistake Magdalena clearly stressed here and haven't had the race she wanted uh, I think uh, it's starting to look like the gods is favoring the Swiss runners today because uh, I would say that Magdalena is not looking like the winner she has been the entire week. And Anna Ulvensson definitely is. She's taking also the right through choice to this fourth control. We know it was a bit faster uh, than uh, the uh, when we saw the Swedish compared to Nicola Miller, but quite close between the runners. After the fifth leg, we also have had change over for Finland 2 and Finland 1. So. And uh, sadly, uh, Sweden 2 has missed punch. Now Magdalena has uh, paused Elian Dining and it looks like they are taking the other route choice, but still they are going together. So no one, uh, Elian, haven't uh, had the courage to go uh, the same route choice as Anna Ulmesa. Ah, there they are changing over. And at that point, actually, I think that the, the best route choice uh, Magdalena is doing, she's taking a bit more elevation, but coming more straight to the control. Uh, Elian, she has to go zigzag. You see here, uh, Elian not taking as much elevation, but uh, the the line is more straight. Magdalena will even be outside the map for a while coming because I think she probably will come from the top to the fourth control. But very interesting to see they were together and uh, taking different route choices to this sixth control uh, to, on this last leg. Magdalena fighting and she has a lot of height to still climb. This takes time. I think she will be fast into the control, but it takes a lot of time doing this. But we know she is a really strong skier. She has worked all, hard all the week. And it looks like uh, Elian is, uh, has come further, but we know that she has to come back into the control, just like Anna Ulvensson is doing. And uh, Magdalena almost has done every climbing she needs to do at this leg. Soon it, she will be over the top. And just gliding into the control. Uh, I'm not certain on how this will play out. But I think it's most interesting to follow this sprint relay. Even though Norway is going for gold in their total alone in the top. So here we see Magdalena is at the top now. And now she has to work hard with her legs and push over the top. Coming into the control. I think it quite... I think it looks good for the Swedish. A, a bit uphill here, and then she just has to go down to the control and glide through the control. Uh, Eli, you see, Eli has come a lot further, but when she comes to the white track crossing soon, Magdalena, then it's most just downhill, and uh, Elian is uh, gonna pick up her. Uh, climbing at the moment but she is close to the control and Magdalena she has a bit further there and then they have the fifth and the sixth and I don't think that uh, there will be possibilities to catch up sometime I think that Magdalena is coming here we will see if we see some red athletes yeah she is just before and here we have the world champions Norway Anna Ulvensson is looking at the map sure being really certain she hasn't done any mistake and they have not done Norway gold medals world champions for two consecutive championships right at the moment big congratulations Jürgen Wacklid and Ulvensson yeah there will be the Norwegian national anthem and we are looking at the silver fight and as I saw we the Swedish Magdalene Olsson gained some seconds on Elian Deininger but reading the map carefully here to the control there is she turning around she's going to the left Elian is not far behind and she really wants to do right here so it's quite hard with the, all these fences that you see the cones on the uh, ground but it looks like Magdalena Olsson is having the silver medal in her bag she will go home to Sweden with two gold medals and two silver medals and Jonathan Stoll running on the side a big congratulations they keeping their position from the last world championship Silver medal to Sweden and bronze to Switzerland. Elian Deininger really happy going over the finishing line, taking her first World Championship medal together with Nicola Miller, who already have two silver medals this championship.
So really fun to see how they did the, their own rule choices. Being brave, uh, as I said quite a lot on the pursuit, having the courage, taking their own rule choice, and reading the map, taking what they think is the best. And it was really close in the end. 53 seconds behind for Sweden and 58 for Switzerland. And they, that is a happy hug between the Swift athletes. So, and there, there is no other team that was compared to these three. Uh, it looks like we having we will have the Finnish team on the way in. John Schneider in the second Swiss team, congratulating the uh, Elian Dininger. And here we have actually Bulgaria has catched up. Uh, I think Linda Lindqvist coming for the Swedish second team. They have missed punch on the earlier uh, leg. So uh, I think uh, a bit disappointing for the Swedish second team uh, coming in there to the finish. And as I said, if if uh, if the Sweden won, they... uh, actually they were not top three anyway. So uh, now we are watching probably the fight for the fourth, fifth, and sixth position. And Finland too. It looks like Amanda Idefutka. Is there something wrong with her GPS, or has she fallen? Ah, uh, yeah. It looks like she has fallen, uh, being passed by uh, the Estonian and also the Italian. So it's really tight here. Uh, and uh, it looks like it will be Antonia Grigorva uh, against Maria Hoskari and Maria Hoskari having the wrong direction there. Antonia Grigorova, Bulgaria coming into the fourth position as it looks like Maria Hoskari is chasing her hard down this sprint, but it won't be enough. Bulgaria at fourth position, Finland at fifth position here in the sprint relay. And we're waiting for quite a uh, tough fight between Italy, Estonia and Finland too uh, on these uh, yeah, we see she's working at uh, her arms a lot. Daisy Kuter Schneider in at sixth position, and then we had Italy on the seventh position, and then we come see here Amanda Ulifutka, the junior. I think it, she's a bit disappointed with falling just right in the end and losing the chance of uh, sprinting against her teammate Maria Hoskari and. Uh, Antonia Grigorova. So the Bulgarian team, really good. Here we see Alina Nigli. That's the Swiss second team coming into the finish. Almost four minutes behind the winners from Norway. So this is the sprint relay. It's high speed. And even though it's a quite easy route choices, and you see they made a lot of shortcuts, uh, and looking, they can also see the controls on the meadows. There is still quite a lot of mistakes that uh, was being made, and I think that uh, when the ladies were out on their first uh, leg, and the Swedish uh, first team did that uh, uh, shortcut on the meadow, losing a lot of time, that was uh, when this was decided. Because when you're not able to even see the Norwegian backs, it's hard to uh, take their any seconds on them. Here we have Sinestrand, Norway two. Coming into the finish, uh, congratulations, we say, to the 10th position for Norway 2. Uh, that was Henrik Fredriksen Aas and Sine Strand who was in that team. And we have more contestants coming into the finish. We'll see which team it is, I think it can be Austria, Antonia Erhardt. Oh, almost missing the finish, she, it's so fun, she wants to go another loop, but Antonia, now you're done. For this home championship, uh, punching in Austria at 11th position, and then we have Estonia too. Looks like Doris Kudre coming in to the finish. Yes, around 5:20 behind uh, the winners of this day. So, as I said earlier, it, it looked really good yesterday for Norway one, and they showed that they were the favorites. For a big reason today. Here I think we have the Czech team. Johanka Simkova it looks like. Coming into the finish. Uh, at 13th position. So yes. That was the Czech team. And we are still waiting. Here we get the winning interview from the Norwegians. Jürgen Barkley, Dan Ulvensson. Another world champion title for you. Jürgen, how was it out there? Uh, it was uh, a bit faster today than uh, the other days. Uh, the snow had frozen during the night, so we could uh, go straight on on uh, the controls out on uh, the field. 
So it was uh, it was physical, uh, physical, just uh, yeah, much skiing and uh, much uh, like big slopes. So not so much uh, narrow tracks, and uh, I think that suits me well, and uh, I enjoyed it a lot. And Olvenson, what were the difficulties today out there for you? Uh, it was uh, very high speed and uh, tough beginning with a steep climb. So you had like the like <laughs> all the way up to the ears uh, but otherwise it was very fun and the b biggest difficulties was on the last uh, downhill where you did a short cut and then suddenly yeah, the skis just went under the snow and on the face but uh, otherwise very good uh, you got quite a comfortable lead out there when did you know that uh, it will be the gold medal uh, yeah, I think I had a bit longer forking on the first leg and uh, when I was fighting against uh, Nikola when I had a bit shorter one on my second and the third leg I, I opened up a gap and uh, then when I uh, saw Anna also was increasing it and I I had a suspect that it was going to be another another last loop with, uh, without any forking so uh, when I went out on that and we had a big uh, big lead I knew uh, it was going to be hard to catch catch us. How were the feelings on the last leg coming into the finish here as the new world champion? Uh, amazing and uh, so, uh, so fun to do it again with uh, Jürgen. Mm. How will you celebrate? I will celebrate with my team and dancing and a banquet and yeah. <laughs> same for you? Yeah, absolutely same. <laughs> Um, you had uh, you had to defend this title. Did you feel any pressure in uh, ahead of this race? Uh, yeah, we uh, we knew we were going in as uh, the favourites, and uh, we were defending it from uh, two years ago, and also from the European champs last year. So we know we're good at this, and we have done it many times before. So uh, that quiets it a bit. But uh, yeah, we, we were feeling the pressure. What about the thought for the last part of the season with another World Cup round in Estonia, Anna? I have very good memories from there because it was a student uh, world championship six years ago and I took four gold medals, so I'm looking forward to it. How is it for you, Jörgen, uh, looking at the World Cup in Estonia? Uh, yeah, I will try to keep my shape to, to then and... Uh... The goal is to win the World Cup uh, overall, so uh, I have a bit of a gap already now and uh, just do good races there and uh, I hope I'll bring it home. What will be the differences from the races there uh, when comparing with the races here? Uh, I haven't checked how much snow it is in Estonia yet, but uh, the rumors say it isn't a lot. So it could be uh, some similarities, but uh, yeah, maybe more narrow tracks and uh, less uh, big tracks. Having a look at this week again, Anna, how did you enjoy the races here in Austria? Uh, I enjoy it very much uh, skiing here in the Alps. I think it suits me very well, quite physically and uh, high speed. So uh, I have enjoyed it very much. And so nice that we had this uh, day at the end with Sun and uh, all the people cheering. What about you, Jürgen? How did you like the races here in Austria? Yeah, very much. I enjoyed it last year when the World Cup was here and uh, yeah, this year as well. Uh, it could have been a bit more uh, sun coming out, but uh, other than that, it's, uh, it's amazing. Um, uh, what about the what about uh, the week here uh, in uh, Austria, Anna? Did you expect it to be like this, or did you have different expectations? Uh, I thought maybe it was going to be more in open areas. Uh, but so I was a little bit uh, surprised by the first races when there's a lot of in the forest and very technical, I think, both skiing and uh, the tech in the map. But uh, very fun uh, ski orienteering here. Mm. Jürgen, how did uh, your uh, expectations differ from the reality you saw here in Austria? Yeah, maybe a bit the same. I thought we were going to do more on the open areas and... Uh, so we, the visibility was better and just look ahead and uh, see where you're going but uh, especially on the sprint I was a bit surprised when uh, we were just going downhill and in the forest and uh, but I changed my head and I uh, thought I'm good at downhill as well so uh, yeah it was uh, maybe yeah, the, the, the more forest uh, was uh, maybe the biggest uh, change that I thought was coming. Thank you so much and congratulations to you too. Thank you.
Yeah, closing up this world championship with the sprint relay, and just as they said, uh, they have been. They were expecting a bit more meadow and more alp terrain than they got the first two days. Here we see the final results. Norway won, uh, winning just before Sweden, 53 seconds, and then 58 seconds down to Switzerland. That was the medals. Bulgaria at the fourth position. Finland won at fifth position. Estonia at sixth position. And we have Italy. Actually, really good race from Italy, I would say, at seventh position. And then we had Finland two at eighth position, Switzerland two, and Norway two. That was the top ten today. And we see also Austria, the home nation, uh, dropping. They had a really good start, but then started dropping in the list, coming in at eleventh position. Estonia two, Czech one, Lithuania one, and then we have Kazakhstan and Czech two. And so Sweden too got mispunched uh, today. So, as I said, it has really been, and as they said, Jorgen and Anna, they are the the true athletes. Uh, they, it was really differing between the races here in Austria, and they were probably looking for a bit more like this sprint relay was. We will get a replay here from the last legs. Here we see Norway going out and. Taking, and then we had Switzerland and Sweden together going out and we know that Nikola Miller made a different route choice here not taking as much elevation as Jürgen Bucklid and Nikola and uh, Jonathan Stoll and getting some seconds there and they also taking different route choices there so here it looked really good for Switzerland and the silver medal Norway just uh, going away stable races and then we see that Switzerland and Sweden took a different route choice going around there. And then they got different again. So we know that Jonathan Stoll lost some seconds there. But still it looked like he was gaining seconds. So I think that was a bit better route choice than the Swiss athlete was taking. You see together they're almost there at the same time. Looks like 10 seconds there and Jonathan Stoll going really hard to catch those seconds. And then they lost their direction a bit into the sixth control, I would say. And then they came into the finish just some seconds between them. Finland 2 coming to the sixth control. And Finland 1 doing quite a big mistake there. Not being able probably to turn because it's so steep and so fast out there. And then going out on a shortcut falling when no one has been before them. see also the women's last leg Anna Holvensen going out with almost a minute lead uh, and knowing her strength I think here she was feeling quite secure and Switzerland Sweden going out together and uh, we also saw there Magdalena Olsson doing a different route choice and it was clearly better not being able to go so much uphill then Elian coming back and Picking up seconds because Magdalena did not have uh, being able to read the map entirely correct there. So they are together again for the silver fight, and here they got changed up. And as I was thinking before the start, I was thinking the route choice that uh, Magdalena Olson is making. And she went all the way around and you see Elian, she doesn't have to, to take as much elevation or climb, but it's uh, a bit more in together. And then they, they met there, uh, Marilyn Olsson, just some seconds before Elian, and that was probably the final thing that decided the silver fight. And in the top four uh, fight, you see Amanda Ilifutka taking another route choice and here clearly ahead of uh, Antonia Gigorova and Maria Hoskari and then falling on this shortcut just being passed and not being able to get up in uh, as fast as she wanted and Antonia Grigorova taking the sprint just ahead of Maria Hoskari for the fourth and fifth position and then Amanda Ilifitka coming in. Uh, as they were asked, uh, Jorgen and Anna, there will be a World Cup in Estonia in some weeks so I would uh, give you a tip of uh, keeping out for that uh, so and follow the best races there so that's the second world cup uh, week that will be this season for the ski orienteers and we are almost closing the this uh, year's world championship we will have the flower ceremony uh, but i would like to thank all the 
ones who have been out sharing in Ramsau and also been sitting at home and following the best racers in the ski orienteering world. And as we said, it looked like the Norwegian were bringing home the most gold medals in the end. Jorgen Bucklid, all four gold medals on the men's side. Incredibly impressive uh, doing that because as we have seen, there has been a lot of mistakes and perhaps the, the first sprint distance wasn't the perfect match for Jorgen. But still, as I said yesterday, the complete package. He, he, he likes to go really hard on the wide track, but he's also a technical downhill ski orienteer. So, and uh, Anna Ulmesen uh, closing her world championship with two gold medals. But uh, I would say Magdalena Olsson is the queen uh, on the ladies side with two gold medals and two silver medals. So they will also, of course, be in the top on the World Cup in Estonia, even though there will be quite much different uh, work there. Probably not as far uphill and a bit more uh, technical, narrow, dense track uh, at some parts. But as they were saying, they were actually a bit surprised on the sprint and pursuit that it was so much in the forest, so much technical, narrow, dense track system. So that was, uh, I think, for the organizers, very fun to hear that uh, they have been uh, looking and training for something, thinking it can possibly be like this. Uh, because all of these athletes, they are looking at the maps before they are looking at how the ground looks. And... Uh, uh, being able to uh, make them a bit surprised, I think the, the course setter would be very pleased with. So we have Elian Deininger and Nicola Müller standing there waiting. We see Magdalena Olsson and Jürgen Bucklid also waiting for the flower ceremony here. Just waiting for Jonathan Stoll. He comes in running there, it looks like. So now it's time for the flower ceremony and then we will have the World Ch Ski Orienteering Championship closer. So as I said, thank you for following these competitions. Now we will have the flower ceremony for the top athletes in the sprint relay. World Ski Orienteering Championships 2024. Ramsau and Dachstein, flower ceremony. In third place, an der dritten Stelle, Switzerland! Die Schweiz, Nicola Müller, Nicola Müller und Eliane Deininger. In second place, ah, oh, jetzt ist es okay. Sweden! Sweden! Jonathan Stahl and Magdalena also. And the winner, World Champion 2024, the team from Norway! Jürgen Backlitz! Und Anna Ulmenzer. And we give a big, 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 big applause. So, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you a good afternoon. And I hope to see you all at 5 o'clock for the prize giving ceremony. And then we have to say goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, a big applause for the medalists here at this mixed sprint. Really, what a thrilling race you have delivered out there. It has been a pleasure to see you racing the entire week. And I hope you can celebrate your successful races or you can celebrate the week at least here now in the evening in Ramsau am Dachstein. It has been a pleasure to... Yeah, we get to see the medal table. As I said, Norway bringing home four, five gold medals. 
and being ahead he of so Sweden in the medal uh, top you also. My side and see you all tonight at the banquet. So, as I said, thank you for all the viewers out there following the best ski orienteers in the world. And we will meet again. Hopefully, you will follow the competitions in Estonia also on IOF Live. Now it's time for these athletes to have a, a funny banquet with a lot of dancing tonight. So they have well deserved that looking like they enjoy the sun a bit. Thank you very much.